Hey everybody, welcome. This is Tom. Uh, in this four-part series, I'm going to show you three, whoa, three different ways to model your code. Okay, so these three different ways to model your code are number one, structured English. Number two, pseudo code. Number three, flowcharts. And I'm assuming the only one that most of you are familiar with are flowcharts. So what does it mean to model your, model your code and why do we do it? So modeling your code lets you put everything down on paper, just like, I don't know, maybe an architect plans a building. They're gonna put everything down on paper before they actually build the building or a writer is gonna sketch out the outline for a book before they actually start just writing the book. Or an artist might sketch out in pencil the outline of what they're gonna paint before they actually start painting it. And in the same way, before you create your algorithm or you create a program or you know, a whole you know, massive piece of software, you're usually gonna to want to spend a lot of time planning it. And the different ways to express your code uh, without actually writing code are things like structured English, pseudocode, and flowcharts. So in big companies, companies that create software and they do it successfully, oftentimes the planning period is much longer than actually writing code. So they might spend a year on flowcharts and writing pseudocode and even structured English before they actually get to writing actual software. Because they want everything laid out and they want to make sure that they have everything in the right places before they start writing code. Because if you just start writing code, you end up realizing you have errors in different places that then have to be fixed. And that leads to buggy, meaning code that has a lot of errors. All right, so let's look at these ways that, that we're gonna use. Uh, in this video, I'm just gonna give you a quick introduction and then in each of the next videos, we're going to take structured English pseudocode and flowchart code like program. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to show you how you can turn that into a Python program. Okay, so let's start with structured English. So structured English really just looks like English with a few little bits of coding parts stuck in. And in this case, you see an if, then, and else. And you see an if-else block here, and then an if block inside this other if block. Otherwise, it reads just like English. If student has not turned in their homework, then, well, if student has a valid excuse, then give them an extra day. Otherwise, take 10% off their score. Right, so that's pretty easy to understand. I could show this to most people, and they would be able to read it. No problem. So structured English does have a few rules. Uh, there's a few things like control structures, if, else, uh, a looping type mechanism, and things like that. But otherwise, it doesn't really have all the same stuff a program does. On the other hand, the next one on our list, pseudocode, does. So this is an example of pseudocode that's written for the C programming language. The C programming language, uh, this almost looks like a C program. Like if you look at this loop, this loop is exactly what you're looking for. And uh, this could be Java code or it could be C or C++ code. Thing that, things that are different is the logic is gone here. So there's no if divisible by, and there's no brackets here for this stuff. And the if i is divisible by three, well that normally would be done by a modulus statement. But in this case, there is no modulus. It just says if i is divisible by three, then do this. And if so, then set print number to false, and then go ahead and do all this business in here. Okay, so pretty easy to understand, but not as easy as structured English. I have another example over here with uh, Pascal. This is an older programming language that's not used a whole lot anymore, but it gives you another idea of maybe something without you know the curly braces. And instead of saying function, it says procedure. Uh, but mostly it's about the same. This looks a little closer maybe to Python because it just has, you know, 4i, 1 to 100, 
kind of like the range function normally in a, in a loop and just you know stuff like that but otherwise it's pretty much just it just looks like code but the logic part has been taken out uh, meaning it's been written in English as opposed to you know symbols like greater than or equal to a modulus and things like that all right so these two uh, C uh, and Pascal they look like code uh, unlike structured English, which doesn't look really a whole lot like code. And then we have the last one, which is much different than both the others. So let's go take a look at a flow chart. So I made this flow chart a little earlier. And for the most part, all it does is just loop and print out numbers. So it starts, it reads in a number. It doesn't say if it reads it from the keyboard or from a file. And honestly, it doesn't matter. Uh, if that number is bigger than zero, and that is true, then do this. If that's false, then go print done and end. So this is just a loop. It just goes through here, do, 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 going back and forth until number is equal to zero or less than zero or whatever. And then it comes down here. Okay. So at this, at this point, this is pretty much a completed flowchart for you know, a looping program. Uh, you'll notice that these boxes are different shapes and we're gonna talk about that more when we get to the pseudocode section, but just just know that each of these boxes has a different shape for a reason. And we'll talk about what those shapes mean and we'll build a program that uses almost all of the different shapes. So coming back here, while this language doesn't really have many rules except for if else a, rule, a looping and some stuff like that uh, and in pseudocode you can kind of make whatever you want in here as long as you follow some of the basic rules for c or pascal or whatever the thing with these diagrams is there it really is a, a set way a one way of doing it and depending on the field you're working in these boxes might have slightly different meanings but in software development, if you look at one person's flowchart and you look at this box or this box or this box, those boxes in anybody else's flowchart should be for the same things. And we'll talk about those things in the flowchart video, but just, just know that the flowchart language kind of has rules to it, while the pseudocode and the structured English language, they have some rules, but it might be different for different people. So different companies or maybe different people have different rules that they use when they make those. Okay, so these are three ways to model your code. And in the next video, first thing we're gonna look at structured English. And we are gonna take a structured English program and we're gonna turn it into a Python program. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And if you have questions, as always, leave them in the comments or leave them uh, on the website. So YouTube comments or website comments. Either one works. All right. See you soon.